Hello everyone. Um, today we will see how do we implement a data table inside a flex card and how we can use multiple events present in the flex card to interact with the data or pass that data into another components. So what I have here is a flex card in which I have added this data table and I have added multiple columns which has uh, the same field name which is coming from my data source in and this table has multiple other attributes like you can see field name label is it sortable is it searchable what is the type is it editable can users select this field and is it visible to the user so you can define all these attributes uh, according to your need if you want it to appear as a text, you can give it text. If you want to appear it as a URL, a clickable URL, it can appear as a URL and different other uh, options in the type is available. If you want that uh, column to be sortable, like A to Z or 1 to 10, you can make it sortable and searchable. So these are the table attributes which we are provided with from the FlexCard table. Then if you see in the attributes, column we have multiple other options like is searchable when you mark this is searchable is true you will be able to search that field value from this search bar the search bar appears here and you can search the value from the search bar okay then we have the cell level edit so if you want to uh, edit the reason field we can give this cell level edit as editable checked if we want to add a delete button in the row, we can check this row delete. If we want to hide the table header, we can check this. If we want to add uh, the checkboxes so that the user is able to select that row, we can mark this use a selectable row. Now, if you have added this row delete, you would want the user to confirm the deletion, right? So if you check this, you will get a modal window on the screen which says that are you sure you want to delete it? Sorry, not this. This this is that model. So show confirm model before the row delete. This is this is when uh, you have this uh, icon on your uh, table and you want to fire an event. Uh, so everything which we do on this table fire different events which we can handle and we can uh, like add logic in our way. So this is that fire event or delete confirm. And the sortable, as, just, as I told you that uh, in the table rows, we can make that column sortable. So whatever column is made sortable, if we can, if we check this box, you will be able to sort the rows based on that uh, column name. And then this we have row level edit. Row level edit gives you a pencil sign here after the end of that row and using that pencil sign if you click that pencil sign all the columns which are editable which you have made as editable will be able to you will be able to edit it okay so let's see this uh, okay one more thing i will just show how that data source for this is set up so uh, right now i'm uh, checking the data sources data raptor and i'm fetching the current users cases so wherever the current users owner is the owner of that case this will uh, fetch those cases and show in a list and this list is also uh, sort like paginated like i have added five uh, as per page and uh, based on that it will be divided and the pagination will be added i will be given the uh, arrows to move back and forth and i can uh, move back and forth using that now if you see that my my data adapter is returning a list of cases so this is the way I can uh, access that. So as it is a list, right? So we need to add the index zero and then I have a name to that list that is called cases. So I have added this cases, okay? Now I'll go to the screen to show you how it looks. So this is our table. Now we can see that this are the fields which we have added. This is the delete button, which I just showed you that we have added. This is the row level edit. If I click on this, all the editable, sorry, all the editable check, all the editable uh, columns were made as editable. And uh, 
this is uh, I added this one as a URL. So this is appearing as a URL. I, I also added this uh, checkbox. So this checkbox click will also uh, generate an event. So as part of this particular version, I'll show you two types of events. The first event is delete. So uh, we also check the checkbox that will fire an event on the click of an edit. So two things can happen. Uh, you add an edit button and you just want to delete it from the screen, but not from the object level, right? Not from the record, uh, SFDC record. So that uh, during that, for that purpose, you will ju just not select that fire event. If you have selected that fire event, then the delete operation will fire and you will be able to delete it in Salesforce as well. So let's see that in action, like uh, 1008, I'll delete this and it went away. Now I'll uh, try to find that 1008 in my zero. So this is not coming, right? If I search for 09, it would come. See, that. so that deletion deleted it from the uh, Salesforce as well, as well as from here, okay? So that happened because I have a listener on the delete event. So uh, whenever I clicked on this button, a delete event was fired, okay? And for uh, handling that, I had this event listener. OK, so I had to add an event listener with the event name is delete. OK, this is a standard name they have provided. And to this, what I want it to happen, like what action do I want to take when a delete event is fired? So I want to take an action which will be of type data because I want to modify the data or alter the data. And what will be the data source type? Where I do, where do I want to modify it? So I am using an integration procedure to make this deletion. So my integration process procedure name is demo update case records in which I am passing these values. ID is action result ID. So just like an event, uh, when you access an event in say in LWC, you say event dot targets or something, right? So here, when an event is fired, you access it like, access it like this way. Okay, action dot result dot field name. So here my field name, I have considered it as ID because ID is required for the deletion purpose. And I have just passed this action as a hard coded value as delete. Okay, uh, this is nothing but the test parameter. If you just want to test how is, our, how is your IP or the data source working, you can pass these values and test it. Save, like save and fetch and this will test your thing. And in the IP, I don't have anything, just a delete action, which will be taking in the ID and deleting that record. So this is how the delete action function, delete event functions in a flex card table, data table. Now uh, we have another action as well here. Uh, if you see this is a URL, right? Now, when I click this URL, an event will fire, which is called row click. Okay, and this row click will take me to the edit page of this record. Okay, so now here I will be able to edit anything I want to edit and I can, I will be able to save this. Okay, so now to uh, make this happen, I have made some changes in the, in the table. The first thing which I made is If you see, this is the case number, right? And in this, I have added this attribute prevent navigation is equal to true. If I didn't add this prevent navigation is equal to true, it would have taken me to a different URL. So to avoid that, I have added this prevent navigation is equal to true. This is only added in the case number because this is a URL I want to, and I don't want to navigate away from that page. I just want to stay at that page and let my row click action work. Right. So now this is the first thing I did for making that work. The next thing which I did was adding a event listener. So next event listener is on the row click. So when I show you this, this row click is the event name, the standard event name that FlexCard provides. And on the on this event name, I want to fire my action of the type navigate. Where do, do I uh, navigate it? I will navigate it to the record page of this case uh, API case object and the action could be edit view or clone 
okay i could have viewed it i could have edited it i could have cloned that record to a new record as well and now the target id would be the id of that record so in this case the event uh, variable is the action dot result dot field name so this is the id and where do i want to open it it will be in my current window it can be a new window or it can be a current window so i have selected current window so this is the way you can handle the row click event okay so let me now go to the uh, yeah i'll show the sortable feature so if you see here it starts with uh, i'll sort with this subject it's sorted in des descending order of a to z it's sorted in ascending order of a to z now the case number as well it's sorted in ascending order and descending order as well the searchable feature is if i search uh, mechanical sorry rotor suppose it will give me a, a matching record so this is the searchable and the sortable feature of a data table now uh, i'll show you different scenarios where uh, let's activate the version 2 to this page okay okay so i'll activate this version Let's see what happens this with this version. What extra thing is added? Okay. Let's see what happens on click of this. Okay. So on click of this, I have been taken to an Omni script with the values uh, populated from that selected row. Okay, you see that case number is here, the status is here, the reason is here, installation, uh, the priority is here. So you can use this scenario when you want to do multiple other complex logic on that record after selecting it. So you can pass the data selected to that Omni script and do your further process processing as and when you want. So for that, I have added a row click. So this will be a row click action. And I have added a set values. So I'm adding the variable uh, values to the session item. So uh, for, for doing this, you will have to set the label, whatever label you want. The type would be card because this is happening inside our card. And the type would be set values because we are setting the values, taking from the event and setting the values in the card itself, in the session variables itself. So here I have selected the session dot selected item and I have added whatever was there in the result. So whatever was there in the result, in the result, I had that row, right? All the fields of that row has been added to the session dot selected item. Now, I have added another action as well in which I am, I am navigating to an OS. So action type is Omniscript. The Omniscript name is whatever Omniscript name we have. And the layout type can be Newport or Lightning, whatever I want. The console tab is just a name which you want to see when the Omniscript is open. Uh, this is not showing because not, this is not a console, but whatever name you want to open in the subtype for that Omniscript, that name will be this name. And an optional icon if you want for that subtype. And a context ID. So the context ID, we all know that we pass context ID in the Omniscript, right, to make it work and to uh, fetch the values from that context ID. So for for my Omniscript, I'm sending the contact ID, uh, context ID as the selected items ID, which is the case ID in our case. And we also are sending all these variables, which I want to pre-populate in my Omniscript. So as you saw in this Omniscript, these values are pre-populated, right? So I am passing these values from here. 
from the session selected item id case number subject status reason and priority and i am opening this in the current window so this is how you open a omni script and pass the data from a data table on the selection of a row you will use the row click event for that so that was the purpose of the second data table version no other changes i guess yeah okay now we'll see the third version let me see if i have something on this okay uh, so this is nothing but just the save the view action which i wanted to so show let's see this Okay, so this has made me uh, navigate to the view uh, page. Earlier, I showed you how to navigate to an edit page, right, of the same selected record. So here, what I'm doing is on the row click, I am navigating it to the record page, but not in an edit format. I am navigating it to a view format. So if user just want to click on, click on the URL and navigate to the view of that uh, record page, we can do that using this row click event. The same row click event just the target action would change from edit to view with the target id same and the uh, other things will remain same the row action will also the event name also will be row click so these are the three events which i have showed you delete row click um yeah two actions delete and row click there are total three uh four uh four uh, actions which uh, four events which i which are there for the uh, this one for this data table update is also there so whenever you want to you have uh, marked your cell as editable and you have updated the data in that table right then you can capture this update action to update your own script okay you uh, you can just edit that row and uh, you can just pass the edited data into the omni script into a new flex card where you want to perform some save action or uh, some, any other action on those updated values. Then we have the select row as well. So select row will uh, fire when a select row is selected. We added checkboxes on the row, right? So whenever we uh, check that row, check that checkbox, this select row will be firing. And uh, we can also handle this and we can do a navigate action to a omni script. We can do a navigate action to a flex card to send the selectable row values there and processes, process it accordingly. We already saw this row click and delete. So these are the four events which we can uh, work with in a flex card data table. That's all regarding flex card. Thank you.